Hi, we have another quick and simple crochet tutorial for your smart doll today. Mirai is doing our modelling and as you can see she's got this lovely colourful bikini bandeau top. Now you can actually add straps to it, I haven't at the moment but I am going to show you a way of doing it after. So as you can see we have a little ruched section here all the way around nicely fitted into her back. I was quite pleased when I did this and it could not be any easier. It's one of the easiest crochet things perhaps I've ever made as well. Now obviously all the girls have different size busts. This can cause a problem so I'm not actually going to do a written pattern per se but I'm going to explain how you can adjust that for the sizings. Now I have what I need. I've used a lovely four ply this time. You can do it in double knit, it will come out larger though, so you might have to do a few less rows if you're not confident enough for a four ply. But to be honest, this is um, a Schachmeyer wool. Um, I don't know how I'm going to pronounce it right now. It's Baby Regia, and they do this gorgeous variegating, and it's a, a short variegation, so you get quick changeover in colour, which is always good. I'm using a three millimetre crochet hook, which if you do uh, on double knit, I would recommend you still do that hook. Obviously, I've got my darning needle. I have got some ribbon here, and I've got this ribbon cutter here. I'll show you why at the end, so I'm just going to move those two out of the way. And obviously, a pair of scissors to do a little bit of cutting. So I'm going to sort of show you roughly how I worked out the measurements. I can tell you how this one fits. This is 50 chain, just 50 chain. So we're going to start with our slip stitch. I'm going to leave Mirai there just for a second or two because it is handy to have her there just to show you the first bit. I'll put my yarn over there so it's not in my way. Now I'm going to do 50 chain. Three, not too tight. Five, six, seven, bear with me while I do this. In 18, 19, 20. Can you see how quick the variation is on this yarn? It is lovely for that, absolutely lovely. 20, so we need 21, 22. Oh, missed it. 30. That's 40. I just need 10 more. As soon as we've got this count done, this that's the hardest bit, to be perfectly honest. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now I've done this a couple of times. Um, first time it was a bit loose, so I know fifty is okay for my doll. Now I'm just going to take her top down so I can show you because as you see she's pretty sort of um, the regular size. She was what the standard size was when I bought her. So I know there's quite a few different sizes out there now. So I'm just going to move her arms up. Now how I worked out the measurement for this and also it might be a good idea even if you've got this size because if you're a little bit looser than me it'll, it may come out a little bit larger. So I'm just going to take it underneath, find the widest part and take it across her bust. Now you might think, well that's not going to fit, it doesn't meet, that's okay, the yarn will stretch very slightly. That's what went wrong with my first one I made, I made it so it literally fitted edge to edge and then when I actually did it, it came out larger because as soon as you get past that first row, your stitches will get a little bit looser so do watch that, so don't worry if it's too tight may take a couple of attempts if you're not sure on your own tension but I came down to 50 for mine so hopefully if you've been crocheting a while 50 should be okay for you now where is it there we go now some people would actually join at this point but as you can see it goes all crinkly and it's quite hard to join and then guarantee this being flat and easy for you to crochet on so what I would recommend is your first row which is going to be double crochets remembering that is the US single crochets because I'm working in UK terms here and you need the flat side can you see that is sort of flat you can see it's like a plait literally but if you work on that side it's lumpier and it's much harder to actually get your stitch in so we need this smooth plait side in a perfect world if you can manage the other way that's fine but this is the way I would go and in this she's still got her arms up hasn't she she's distracting me put your arms down <laughs> in fact I'm gonna move her slightly 
so we've got a little bit more room to work there right so basically i'm going to do one double crochet say us single crochet into every single stitch now i've got my 50 stitches now so i don't need to think about counting or anything now i am going to join this into a circle after this round it's a row it's not a round it's a row so bear with me while we do this again can you see it keeps twisting try and keep it flat if you keep it flat you're going to get a nicer edge it's not always that easy because you can see it likes to curl up which is a little annoying that will flatten after you've done a few more stitches it just does have a tendency to curl to start with I love working in four ply it does make the uh, the work a little bit finer so if you can do four ply i think it's a better option for this size doll if i was working on a smaller doll i would most definitely um, be working on four ply and possibly even down to a one ply depending i mean i've done a few items for my smart dolls using um, sock yarn which is a four ply but i've also used a lace weight which is that one ply so it does take it quite down very delicate but it takes a long time to make the whole point of this is that it's going to be quick and easy summer's here for some of us although we've had some very strange weather and i've heard from a few of the your others out there that you know you're getting strange climate to, for this time of the year we're not too bad today it's just a little bit muggy you see i did a stitch that was a bit tight there so it makes it hard to get in so you do have to be careful with these chain so take it a little bit slower i did rush mine i know now the only stitches you need for the whole of this is the double crochet that i'm doing now and oh, what we have over here in the uk it's going to be a half treble now that's a half double crochet if you are working in the US. I will put a very brief um, list sort of saying which is which because it can get a little bit confusing. I mean some people will be using UK terms in the US, some people will be using US terms in the UK. Either way it's the same stitch just a different name. Right we're nearly there. Right don't worry you're not going to have to watch me do every single stitch because these are smaller stitches than I normally do it does take longer so I've actually done some stages and I've tried to make the pattern so it's simple to work with so I've done everything in rows of three after the after we get past this which is our foundation row which I absolutely detest doing when I get past my foundation row, I actually feel I can get on with my crochet, but I always find it quite hard to get past it. And 50 stitches, you might not think so much, but it feels like an eternity sometimes. So we are nearly there, nearly there. Oh, I've changed to a lovely orange now over that yellow. Isn't that pretty? You don't have to use a variegated yarn, of course. You don't have to use the yarn I've used. If you've got some scrap yarn, because it certainly doesn't take much, you can just have a go and have a play around with it right i'm going to say i am there so you see it's still curling but it's still easier now to actually join so i'm going to turn it over because i want to try and keep it flat 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 so that's the underside all the way around I'm trying to uncurl it trying to uncurl it so it would be front edge to front edge without losing its shape but can you see it's easy to twist so i'm going to check i've done that again because there's nothing worse you get halfway through it and you realize it's twisted and you you know you are literally got a twisted shape so i'm going to try an attempt i hate doing this bit to get in to that first stitch which sometimes takes a bit of a battle i did it i'm in and i'm just going to do a slip stitch take your time and then I can double check. Yeah, that's that, that's even all the way around. That's even. It's not sort of twisted, so I'll suddenly be on the back somewhere. I'm going to do one chain, and I'm going to just do one double crochet into each of these stitches around. Now you'll find it easier now because we're going not into a chain. We're going into an actual stitch. And remember, see, so you've got your two parts. I can do it without blurring. Have I blurred? I'm not sure. I'll leave it a second and it, it unblurs sometimes. Right, so you've got two sides. I want both of them. You see both of them now on that hook. 
and pull it through. You can do a front one and you can do a back loop as well which does create a pattern but for now for a bit of stability we need both sides. So I'm going to stop there because I'm going to change over to my other sample piece. You'll be seeing this and you'll be thinking oh no look there's a gap. We're going to sew that in afterwards. You could have joined right at the beginning if you're confident with that but I just find it's easier to make sure you're getting it nice and smooth if you just do a straight row first then do your join. It's going to be double crochets all the way around and we're going to have three rounds. So I'll just show you a couple more before I change over to the ones. Remember in, pull through, we have two on the hook, pull through two. Go in, pull through, pull through two. If you're not sure there is a tutorial on my page where you can do for the, the basic stitches so please have a look if you're a little bit sort of rusty or you've not done it for a while you just need a little bit of a refresh. So we'll put that one to one side. And I'll show you what we get after we've done our three rounds. Here we are, three rounds. So we've done our foundation of 50 chain, we've done a foundation double crochet row, remember, because I don't join it till after that row, so you can see you've got that gap. I joined it and then I did three rows in double crochet using this as my stitch marker because obviously it's going to be directly below all the time so you know. Now my next stitch is our half treble. If you're not sure, as I say, it is a half double crochet over at the US. So I'm going to start it by doing two chain. I'm going to wrap the hook, wrap the hook, I'm not, I'm going to wrap the yarn around the hook into the space, pull it through. Now with a treble we'd then pull through two, pull through two, but with a half treble we're going to pull all the way. So yarn round into the hole. We have three, we pull through all three. Round in, pull through all three. Now as you can see I'm sort of doing it in stages. Can you see I'm going two, one? That doesn't matter. If you're happy and you can do it through all three at once, that's brill. But if you want to do it in sections, which I quite often just do automatically, it sometimes makes it a little bit easier. So it's yarn round the hook, Make sure you get all three. Yarn round the hook, all three. It makes interesting pattern with the variegation as well when you start on a longer stitch, so you get it slightly different there. Got a gorgeous green in there now. Now, as I said before, we're going to do it in threes. So we had three double crochet rows. We're going to have three half treble rows. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this because we got another set of rows after, so you're going to have to sit and watch me do those. Right, where, 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 there we go. So this stitch also allows a little bit of stretch across the bust. So it's a longer stitch, but can you can see? I think that's looking quite pretty. I think that works quite nicely. So we'll pop that one to one side. So half treble rows, we're going to do three of them. And here, is what it looks like after three half treble rows. So again, we have our chain, we have our foundation row. We have three double crochet rounds. We have three half treble rounds. We're now gonna finish off with three double crochet rounds. So this time, just in, and it's, remember it's just the two. So you're gonna to have to pop, put up with me doing the three rows I'm afraid with this one. So if you know what you're doing, you can skip forward. There we go, I'm on a green now. I like it when it goes pink and green. Now you will actually see that I've added a subscribe button to my page now. Oh, I've been having a fight trying to find out how to do this. YouTube is so complicated, it doesn't really tell you that much unless you're very techie minded, which I'm certainly not. So I'm having to learn from scratch. And um, oh, I was like searching, sort of looking for other pages. I did finally found um, another YouTuber that gave me the information on how to do it. And I got there, so I was right excited because I've actually managed, if you look, where well, I can't point this way, down there somewhere. Um, there is a little red button for subscribing. So if you haven't subscribed, it'd be, it'd be great if you did. You need to try and get these numbers up a little bit. There we go, I'm nearly round for the first round. Oh, now I know I'm doing this for a smart doll, but you could do it for any doll. 
just following the same system of making a chain of X amount, trying it round the torso of the doll, remembering, depending on what yarn you're using, there will be a stretch. I could have used a cotton, which there wouldn't have been a stretch, but then, as you know, they're sometimes a little difficult to actually dress. I try and avoid taking my dolls apart as much as possible for dressing and of course there's some dolls out there that it's very difficult to do that with so you don't want to be messing about um, if your doll's strong do you really you need to make it as easy as possible to get the item on I have actually taken uh, Mirai's arms out to get this on just at least for the first couple because as I said there will be a little stretch so don't worry too much if it's a little bit tight to start with I know I made some little slippers for her and the first pair I made to fit so they were comfortable fit take them on and off a couple of times and it stretches so now when I make them I make them that little bit tight so when you do put them on after a while they fit perfectly so it's always best to go a little bit tight when you're using certain yarns obviously it depends on the style of the item as well right we're on our second round now so we're nearly there there's not that much to it is there all you need is two stitches and as I say if you're not sure on them stitches you can pop on if even if it's not my YouTube there are lots and lots of uh, beginner crochet workshops out there so you find one that suits yourself there we go so this is my second round if you've only been working on double knit you might find this a little bit fine to start with but persevere because it's a beautiful weight yarn to use now I've gone quiet I can hear the rabbits tapping on cage downstairs at least I've not been joined by the pussycat today the only reason I've not been joined by her is I think she's got, from what I could hear, rummaging. Let me have a quick look. Yes, she is. She's inside the doll's house. One of the windows has been pushed out. It's not a completed doll's house. It's one we got cheap, so um, second-hand shop. So I'm planning on doing it up. So there's absolutely nothing in it at the moment. But it makes a perfect cat house, apparently. But problem being is she got in it. She couldn't get out. So there was me trying to, she got halfway out. I'm trying to squeeze her, sort of trying to manipulate her through the window, poor little thing. But if you've seen one of the doll ones, you saw Poppy introduced herself by jumping all over everything and making a mess. She gets away with it though, because she's old. That's her excuse. She can do what she wants. Oh, onto a pretty orange, peachy orange and pretty pink. This is actually the last round. Again, as I've said before, if you know what you're doing, you could just fast forward quickly. We just need to get all the way around to that start point. As I said before, 50 stitches doesn't seem much. It does when you're going round and round. I reckon, you know, if you sat quiet while you're doing this, you can probably get this done in about half an hour. We're on about 18, is it 18 minutes? Yeah, 18 minutes. But remember, I've jumped a few sort of spaces. Um, so really probably of what, by jumping, I've missed about four, four or five rows, six rows. Um, so you would have to add that on. But I reckon you could get a little top done in half an hour. The top is also quite versatile, which I'll show you at the end. Something else we can do with it. It's not just a bikini top. We like things that are dual purpose. I reckon about another 15, is it? 10, 15? Yay, nearly there. Got a little bit of sewing in at the end. And that's basically it. We have made... Look at that, I've run out of yarn, so I'm going to have to just crop it there, which is a bit naughty, but I haven't got much choice. That's my own fault. I thought I'd uh, pulled off enough yarn. Clearly not. But it doesn't matter, because we still get away with it. So this is our finished piece. I want... Remember, that's where we started this to be the center. There is a reason for that, which I will show you. So I'm going to sew in that end that should have actually managed to get there. I think it's about three stitches off. 
but as I said, not the end of the world. So I'm just going to stitch that one in and then stitch it in through the back. I found my sharp needle, so I'm really pleased. It does make such a massive difference. I was trying to use a blunt wool needle. Oh, it was awful. I just couldn't get anything neat. These sharp ones, you can get through your yarn much, 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 much better. Right, so we need to stitch in that little bit. We need to tidy that up. So first thing I'm going to do is stitch that to join to the other piece. Stitch it however suits you. There we go. It's just a little stitch together. Now I'm going to run this just running stitch, not small, just a normal running stitch through. And what it does is gather it up. And you see how it's just gathered it up. I'm going to tie a little knot at this end. So that's started together. And we're going to gather it back the other way. Pull it nice and tight where you're wanting it to be now. Make a knot. And thread the yarn through. I hope that was clear enough. Little cut. So we'll get rid of that as well. So there you go. We have our little bikini bandeau. Now I'm going to pop that one up there and bring Mirai back with hers because as I said the original picture I put up did have a strap on it and I crocheted a chain which you could do that but I'm going to take a hair off a second. I'm going to try it with a ribbon. So this might this might be a little bit easier. So it seems a very long piece of ribbon that, but I find if you want to tie a bow, it's best to have a long piece and then cut it short. And all I'm going to do is thread it through, just threading it through, making sure this is nice and flat. Can you see what I did? I'm going to pull it tight and then get it the right way around. We can then tie it around her neck so she's got that as well doesn't need it i'll do it again if you want so i've just basically folded my ribbon in half tucked it in either way again doesn't matter the loose loops the loose strand should i say through the loop oh flashing at us and pull it tight and then it can be fastened i'll turn her over into a bow or however you would prefer to do it now the little piece of equipment I showed you at the beginning is my ribbon cutter the reason I do have one is because ribbon can fray and it is very annoying when it does now this little piece of equipment is one of the best things I bought so I'm going to turn it on it just takes batteries you can see there's like a little wire inside so I'm going to be careful not to catch her but basically I'm going to just pop carefully across. I'm going to place this down, hold it tight, hold it tight. I might have been, not wait, need to wait a minute or two because I've not done that but we'll see. See if it cuts. Cut. Hopefully it's heated up enough. Let go. Ta -da. And what is done is sealed this end of the ribbon. So look, it's not going to fray now. Because there's nothing worse than you make something um, and then it, it frays. It's very frustrating. So let's try this side. Approximately there. Got a bit of blue tack there because sometimes I have that to hold the ribbon in place if it's a bit short. So shut, hold tight, press and done. Sometimes it makes a little click sound so you can hear it. So I'm going to turn that off now because I don't want my batteries to run out. So by doing that, I've made sure that our ribbon is not going to fray. So she's got a nice ribbon at the back there. So just pop her top up a little bit. I've moved it about a bit there, haven't I? There we go. So there we go, a very basic, nice and simple bikini. But I did mention we could use it for something else. Now I'm gonna do it without her hair because I do want to sort of stretch it a little bit, but let's pop it over. I think she looks quite cute actually without it. Look at that. We have a lovely headband. 
so if you've got enough yarn to make two she can have a matching headband with her bikini obviously as you know with her hair it's a bit more fiddly to do than that in fact let's have a little play see if i can do it pop your hair back on missus it depends on your doll's hair i think the shorter hair is actually easier to pop on things like this let's have a go shall we squeeze you on oh actually that looks quite cute yeah quite pleased with that again if you wanted to embellish you could pop a little bow on here a little button on here might look quite nice a little heart button same for the center of here if you're wanting to decorate it up you can do it a little bit fancier than that you see she's got a little mark on her arm bless her i've got to get some stain removal for that but basically that is it love to hear from you please let me know how you went any problems again please ask don't be afraid I could have perhaps worded something wrong or something so please do ask me if you're not sure um be great to see some pictures on Instagram and that out there saying that they've made them it'll be even better if you enjoyed this please like subscribe and share don't forget this new button let's point to the new button mirror down there somewhere down there I think it's down that end you watch I'll be pointing to it wrong end and Hope to see you soon with some more videos on how to make some nice, simple outfits for our smart dolls there. So thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye.